With supposedly reputable websites like TechRadar calling the likes of Microsoft 365 a backup solution, even though Microsoft specifically states in their T's and C's that they don't back up your data, it's no wonder that people are getting their knickers in a twist when it comes to backing up their data. So if you're new around here, hi, I'm Pete, and today we're answering the question of what is the best cloud backup service in 2021. If you haven't seen already, I've made a video around the best cloud storage for 2021, and one of the most common comments on that was, well, if they're not backing up your data, then how do I? First up, make sure you subscribe because, well, YouTube. Second, smash that like button. First time I said smash, still feels weird. Then third, watch this video. So here it is, the best cloud backup service in 2021, a review. And because there are quite a few backup providers out there, today we're going to be looking at a small selection of what's out there. Probably the most reputable or well-known names, well-known nim nim names, or this video will be like just far too long. Now, unfortunately, the one backup provider who I kept seeing top all of the charts on like all the other comparisons, SOS Online Backup, they're no longer taking on new customers unless you have more than five users or more than five terabytes of uh, backup data. So, well, that just excluded them straight away. But with that said, today we're going to be looking at Backblaze, iDrive, Carbonite, and CrashPlan. And for each of these, we're going to be looking at the key headlines of price, device support, the backups themselves, restoration experience, security, support experience, and user experience. Now, as with all of my reviews, I'm actually signing up for these myself and paying what they cost so I can actually test them. Like nobody's sponsoring this. And after I finish up this video, I'm then going to search around and see if I can find like any discounts for anybody interesting in signing up. So if you want to use the links in the description below, you can get those discounts too. For my tests, I haven't just installed this on a test machine or just looked over like the specs online to regurgitate the stuff. I've literally installed this on my main machine that I use. And I've used these products for a few weeks, which is Kind of stupid in a way because, well, I think I'm gonna have to wipe my computers fairly soon because I'm just installing so much junk on them at the moment. But at least you can't say it's not a real test. Now, do make sure to stick around until the end because after we've looked at the options, I'm gonna briefly touch on why you shouldn't be using Microsoft 365 or Gmail or Dropbox or any of those other cloud storage platforms as your backup. And whilst you are watching, make sure to let us know what backup software you are using right now, if you are using one, and how well it's working for you down in the comments. So it's always great to hear experience from other people just in case there are other options out there and um, help others make a decision for themselves. So kicking it off, or rather firing it up, let's talk about Backblaze. Pricing is really simple here, $6 per month per computer or $60 per year for unlimited data. That's pretty much as simple as it gets. On device support, it does support Mac and PC, no mobile clients here. And if you want to back up a NAS drive, then you'll need to sign up for their B2 cloud storage instead. You can, however, back up external hard drives. Over to the backups themselves and for versioning and retention, it does 30 days by default, or you can pay an additional $2 per month to extend that up to one year. And they also do offer an unlimited option for like an additional fee. Really great if you need to hold onto your data for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely no complaints there at all. Again, simple as you like. It also defaults to continuous backup, which is great. It doesn't offer deduplication, but of course it is unlimited data, so that's kind of not really an issue. For restoration, you can get Backblaze to ship you a drive with your data on it worldwide, which you do pay for, but they also will then refund the cost if you then return the drive to them within 30 days, which is of course great for those in the US, but not quite sure how well that stacks up after you factor in return shipping costs from like outside the US, but at least it's an option. For other more regular file restorations, it's okay. You can't restore directly via the app, and you have to go through the web portal. And anything more than a single file restoration needs like zipping up, which means you kind of sat there waiting for your, your restorers being prepared. But when you do download it, it is really, really quick. So I don't really have any issues per se. It's just not as nicely integrated as some of the rest of their, the, the other apps. Security wise, Backblaze uses 256 bit encryption and they let you set up your own private encryption key, which is a really nice thing to see so that you can encrypt your data to make sure that even Backblaze themselves can't access it. Over in support, they have live chat, though it wasn't actually available whilst I was trying to use it in the afternoon and evening here in the UK. But I did submit a ticket to them and they did come back to me within a couple of hours with a really good response. User experience, Backblaze is kind of an interesting one, particularly on the Mac since it integrates with like the system preferences panel rather than having a separate app that you run. But this does mean that it, it looks sleek and simple and uh, I mean, I like it. And, and, and pay very close attention to this. It actually uploaded at full speed, like, 
my full 110 megabytes per second upload. I actually, if I even saw 130 megabytes per second at one point, which is kind of interesting because I only pay for 110 megabytes per second, but hey. Now to get it to do this, I did have to go into the settings and set it to unlimited bandwidth and set the simultaneous file upload to its maximum. Even though it warns me that only really fast computers should play with this setting and that they also recommend setting it to no more than six threads, well, screw that. And if we want to talk about performance once more, my M1 Mac Mini, even with this program set to 30 threads, my CPU was only hitting 10% at its peak. Absolutely killing it. Uh, you should, of course, go and watch my videos, which I'll link up here and down below on the M1 Mac Mini review. Only, and I, I really mean the only, only niggle that I have with this, is that you can't see what it's backing up. It's meant to be intelligent enough to know what to back up, which it does say is because it gives you that peace of mind. But I'd also kind of like to have the peace of mind by seeing which folders and files it thinks you should be backing up. But hey, you can check this by going to restore something anyway, so not a huge issue. Anyway, calming down, next up we have iDrive. Pricing wise, we are at five gig for free, $52.12 for five terabytes, and 10 terabytes for $74.62. And those prices are for one year, one user, unlimited computers, which is really nice to have because some of the others only include a single machine for that monthly or yearly cost. When it comes to device support, iDrive supports Mac, PC, iOS, and Android, though I didn't actually test the mobile client as just honestly have no use for it. But iDrive does also support external drives and NAS drives. So if like me, you have a ton of files sat on a separate NAS device for those muggles amongst us. It's the muggles. Muggle. Muggles. It's basically just like a box with a ton of hard disks in it. You can back that up with iDrive 2 and it will even work on their entry level paid for plan, which is really, really great. Looking at the actual backups themselves, it starts off with pretty good news. Uh, first off, iDrive can ship a physical drive to you to do like a local backup if you know, perhaps your internet connection is too poor. They will physically post you a hard drive, which you can then connect to your machine, back up your data to, and then post it back to them to store and upload. All of this whilst your data is securely encrypted and the service is worldwide, though you might have to pay shipping fees and custom fees, like depending on where you are. But they're not extortionate prices. iDrive does have continuous protection, though you do have to remember to enable this manually within the settings after you install the client, and it only works for files up to 500 meg in size. Files bigger than that will be picked up in their daily backup job that you can figure you know, to run overnight. And once your files are backed up, then they'll retain up to 30 versions of all files backed up on your account. It's really good. The only admissions here really is that iDrive doesn't offer deduplication so that you're not accidentally backing up yeah, multiple copies of the same file, which would be kind of nice to have since you're paying based on like, how much data you're storing. That is the backup. What about restoring? And good news again to start with, iDrive can ship your drive again worldwide with your data. So if you need one, if your computer blows up, you've got terabytes of data, but maybe a slow internet connection, there is a great option for you. Though of course you then have the delays of shipping it and then you copying data from the drive, but it's still a really nice to have. And if you're a US customer, they actually have an overnight shipping option, which will get your data like next day delivery, which is really, really good. Otherwise, if you want to just restore a file within iDrive client itself, then it is just a case of browsing the file structure, checking a box, choosing the restore location, and then clicking restore now. UI, great. The speed at which it downloaded, not so great. The maximum it hit was 30 meg per second, and I have a one gig connection. So I should be able to hit over like a thousand megabits per second. This seems to be a recurring issue with these cloud backup services. But what I will say is that using iDrive, I did see some of the better speeds of the others with the exception of Backblaze. Over in security land, I quite like that iDrive lets you set your own encryption key. It does tell you to say that if you do set one, then you can't share files because, well, it's encrypted with your own encryption key. And you should be using a backup service to back up your files, not as a file sharing service. That is what the likes of Dropbox and Google Drive and 365 are for. And all files are encrypted with a standard 256-bit encryption. For support, they do have online chat, which in my experience gave me a near instant response. And I also submitted a ticket via their website at 11.29 a.m. on Wednesday the 3rd of March and got a response two hours later. So again, really good going right there in the support department. Finally, for user experience, well, Bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. I haven't been blown away by the software. In fact, it still reports that my quota is zero bytes when I should have up to five terabytes of quota within the clients. So it's kind of still prompting me up to upgrade, even though I'm a paying customer. Although that did then update itself a few days later, strangely. Setting my initial backup job was really, really easy. But when the job started, it kind of like just locks up the client for me for a really long time. I guess it was like trying to process all the files that it needs to back up. And I did have a couple of different experiences here in terms of the upload speeds. On PC, I could hit around 20 to 30 megabits per second, which is 
great for most people, to be honest. But that said, again, I do have a 120 meg upload speed, so I'm not quite sure why iDrive wouldn't use the full bandwidth that was available. But over on the Mac side, it was much, much slower. I had 198 gig in total to upload, and it completed it in over 20 hours. So it completed it, good. 20 hours, not so good. And if you look at the upload stats from my Mac, which again is hardwired into a one gig down and 110 meg up connection, but the upload speeds barely ever reached over 10 meg, meg per second. Even Plex, which the kids were watching a movie on next door, was uploading faster than, than iDrive could upload to the internet. And my M1 Mac CPU and memory were like just barely doing anything. So it seems to be a limitation of the iDrive client itself, or maybe it's just not M1 compatible yet. When I asked their support about this, they did ask me to do a speed test to Oregon. So I'm guessing the data is at least initially being backed up to Oregon before hopefully being replicated everywhere else. Overall thoughts? Great pricing, great features, the client app is pretty good, and the upload speeds for most people won't be an issue. But if you do upload faster than you know, 20 or 30 megabits per second, then it may be worth checking out one of the other options. Next, we're taking a look at the one that's been around for a very long time, Carbonite. Getting straight into pricing, their basic computer backup is $24 per month when billed annually, but if you check the home computers box on their website, it then offers you an option for $6 per month when billed annually, with just a couple of less features, which for home user, probably not a big issue, and all of these plans it seems to come with unlimited storage, but for a single machine. If you want more machines, then you just sign up for more subscriptions. And actually, I had some issues here because their website has a number of versions of their pricing and comparison pages, which all show completely different things, which is confusing. Click on compare backup plans and it only shows you the $24 plan until you then click on that home computers button. Click on home backup at the top of the page and then buy now and you come to a completely different one which seems to be based on numbers of computers but does show the $6 plan. But if you go back to the same home backup page and then click get started it then takes you to a third screen which now shows you a starting price of $6 with then optional extras to add things like external hard drive backup antivirus, the courier recovery service, and interestingly, automatic video backup. More on that in a moment. Over in device support land, again, we've got Windows and Mac support, though no support yet for the new M1 Max, and there's no mobile client either. You can back up a single external hard drive if you upgrade to the higher tiers, and there is no NAS support other than backing up a Mac drive, which only works on Windows. For actual backups themselves, Carbonite has a 30-day retention, which is good. It's not quite as good as having, say, a 30 version history like iDrive does, just in case you delete something and then don't notice something for a while. And when I talked about pricing a moment ago, I mentioned an interesting find on their Get Started variant of their signup page, which had an optional extra called Automatic Video Backup. And if you scroll down, it proceeds to tell you that any video file over 4 gig must be manually added to their backup. I mean, that's me out from being able to use this product completely. And since a 4 gig video file from, say, an iPhone is around 10 minutes worth of 4K footage, yeah, it's not good. But then I found another article on their website talking about file size limits. And it seems that Carbonite won't automatically upload any file above 4 gig unless you upgrade to the higher tiers. I mean, that's just a nail in the coffin. I don't want to be double checking that all my files are under 4 gig. Even without video files, 4 gig still isn't much in today's world. And, and take away that peace of mind that everything is backed up would be soul destroying if you ever missed anything and wanted to get it back. On that basis, I'm going to completely skirt over the next few items as I just can't recommend Carbonite with their 4 gig limit and confusing website. And, and well, when it comes to restorations, guess what? you need to upgrade to their higher tier to get a courier service. Security is all managed by Carbonite, which I don't find as secure as being able to set your own keys. And on the, the lower plans, it's also 128-bit encryption and not the 256-bit offered by others. So half as secure? Support for me was another confusing experience. I actually did call their pre-sales number listed on the website as I was still trying to figure out their pricing plans. And the person who answered didn't have a clue or didn't know anything about their consumer backup products and even mentioned that he wondered if the phone had be forwarding to them for, for some strange reason. But you do get a phone number and uh, so you can submit an email ticket. No live chat that I can see, though the person I did speak to on the phone said I should be able to follow the website and get to online chat. Well, just pretty awful to be honest. But I did send a ticket through to support and four days later now, I still haven't received a response. So a big, big no in that department. Carbonite fell over for me again in the user experience department. When I downloaded the client, I had issues getting it to run. And to be honest, the installer just looked badly designed and reminded me of like one of those Windows XP apps being forced to run on Windows 10, if you get what I mean. Also, the UI was like really basic. Well, it's all I can say really. There's no options. There's nothing really to configure. It just backs up and you can select folders to back up. But that's kind of it. Upload speeds were just abysmal. 
So as I said earlier, I really just can't recommend Carbon Eye. Don't buy it, don't use it. Please go with one of the other options. And full disclosure, I didn't even bother testing it on Windows because all of the issues I kept finding with it just made me not want to use it. So yeah. I've only actually left this segment in to hopefully show you what big differences are between them and, and the other providers. So in summary, one hot mess. On to Crash Plan. With Crash Plan, it's actually for small businesses, but I did want to give this a try as I've heard such good things and I did kind of not really see the issue when you're signing up as an individual anyway. Kind of like when you sign up for Google Workspace and pretend to be a business just to get their you know, unlimited storage offerings. Pricing is nice and simple with Crash Plan. It is $9.99 per month per device plus taxes for unlimited space with no file size restrictions and they have a free 30 day trial. Well, this is refreshing. Crash Plan supports Mac, Windows and Linux, no iOS or Android support and it does support external hard drives, but no direct support for NAS, though you can map drives through to a NAS and it will back them up on both Mac and PC. For the actual backups themselves, well, let's run through a checklist. Retention, yes. Configurable, versioning, yes. Configurable, continuous backup, yes. Deduplication, yes. Ding, 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 ding. And it just looks and works so much better than some other competitors, naming no names. <laughs> it is a shame that with everything else looking so good about Crash Plan that they don't offer a courier service. Minor detail for some, but for others, if you need terabytes of data and you didn't want to you know, wait weeks to download it, a disk being posted to you would be so much faster. So this may be a key point for those with a lot of data who need to access it quickly. But with that said, restoring files was quick and easy, but worth noting that even restoring large files, I never really got more than 100 meg download speeds, even though, again, I'm on a one gig connection. So if you are downloading a lot of data, then that can be kind of limiting. For security, 256-bit encryption as standard, and I do like that you can set a password or a key which must be entered before you can then restore anything, including by crash plan themselves. So that gives you another layer of security that your, you know, your data is safe unlike backup providers who don't let you set your own encryption keys. Support has been great so far with Crash Plan. They have a live chat that was quick and had no queue. And the person I did speak to could see exactly what was going on and they were able to help without messing around. Like sometimes when you, you know, get bogged down in those, can I please confirm that your computer is switched on? Okay, I have confirmed that your computer is now switched on. Now I would like to confirm that you have the install the application. Hello IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? Ah! But they also chased up a number of times after resolving the issue to make sure things were solved. So they definitely performed well for support. But then again, that's kind of what you expect from a business product. Over in the user experience department, it was super simple to sign up, really easy to install the app, which just has a ton of options to set, like bandwidth limits and alerts if backup jobs don't run. And just overall, it looked clean and modern and like it had been updated this century, which is a far cry from some of the <coughs> others I tested. It backs up all files of all sizes continuously with no restrictions. So at least with this, you could set it up and be safe that everything is being taken care of. But with big caveats, I couldn't get any more than maybe five meg upload speeds on the Mac and 10 meg, maybe 15 at most on Windows. And I kept getting prompted to sign back in when I came back to look at the app after a while which was kind of annoying. And these were both running on fairly vanilla installs with high spec machines that weren't struggling to upload at faster speeds like we've seen with other backup providers here. Overall, it does look like a great app with some really great features, great pricing, just let down by the transfer speeds really. And, and those speeds may not affect you. It could be my location or, or something else, but also a slight annoyance that it did keep signing me out. So this is another really good contender and one worth testing yourself. Aside from the fact it's more a business product, it looks to be a really great product other than those poor speeds again. Whew. Okay, recommendation and summary time. Before we talk briefly about the whole Microsoft 365 Google Workspace backup thing, after looking at all of these options, the only one, and I do really mean the only one I can fully recommend, is Backblaze, for, for me personally. On sheer transfer speeds alone, it makes the other services nearly just unusable if you want to back up and restore your data quickly, providing you have a fast connection. The only real negative I see that to restore anything, you have to go to the website and download the file as a zip file, whereas the others I tested could let you just restore directly via the app and then to whichever location you wanted it to go to on your computer. If you don't have fast upload speeds like me, and perhaps a more normal cap of maybe like 20 meg per second, then iDrive would be my recommendation as another option. And notice how I haven't really said anything about price here. In my opinion, all of these services, with the exception of that hot mess of Carbonite, provide value for money. 
it is not unreasonable to pay any of these amounts for peace of mind that your data is protected. As I mentioned before, I will put a link in the description below to sign up for any of these services. And if I can find any discounts, I'll be sure to link those as well. So with that said, and after you've subscribed to this channel, because that really helps the channel to grow and be seen by more people, why isn't Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace or, or Dropbox or any of these cloud backup storage providers a backup? Well, with Microsoft 365 as an example, they specifically state in their T's and C's that nobody reads when signing up, that they do not back up your data and that you are responsible for ensuring that your data is backed up. They will ensure your data is available, but no guarantees that they can recover your data if it gets deleted or lost or, or ransomware. And this is the same with Google as well, but not strictly true with the likes of Dropbox who will actually give you either a 30 day or 180 day history of your files, depending on which plan you're signed up for. The reason why I wouldn't personally say to use Dropbox to store your files and use it as a backup is that, well, in the IT industry, there's always been this backup rule of three, two, one. Always keep at least three copies of your data stored in two different locations and one of them being offsite. For me, I have my data on my laptop, NAS, and the cloud. Three copies of data in two locations, one offsite. So for you to use Dropbox as both a file storage and a backup solution, it just kind of adds that element of risk. And what if Dropbox ever got targeted or, or had a big disaster or their data centers got flooded? Yes, I'm sure that technically speaking, they're all set up to cope with such an event, but it isn't uncommon for big, big companies to have massive outages who then realize that actually their backup plans weren't quite as good as they thought. I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't want to find that your data was sat in that uh, didn't quite work area. <laughs> And proof is in the pudding, sheer days. Maybe even hours after shooting this video, French cloud operator OVH suffered a disaster after a fire ripped through a data center, currently taking offline 3.6 million websites and with the CEO taking to Twitter to ask their customers to activate your disaster recovery plan, then followed an announcement that some services it classes as recoverable, well, they're yet to locate any backups. Back to, uh, uh, me? So always best to have your data backed up somewhere else just to be safe. If you like this video, then don't forget to check out this one where I talk about the best cloud storage providers, or how about this one where I review the best password managers. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Click the join button to become a member for no other reason than saying thanks for making these videos. Give the video a thumbs up if you did. Hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are posted. Or if you didn't, let me know how I can make your life feel better by leaving a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>